This is my first presentation for the use of MDCT in chest and abdominal trauma and MDCT equal MSCT or multi-slide CT. It's prepared by Prof. Sharaf and revised by Prof. Yusriya Sabri. We know all that trauma is one of the leading cause of this, maybe third or fourth, according to the different references, and that in such cases we follow the technique of whole body CT scan. In, in, uh, uh, including neck, chest, abdomen, pelvis, and we use contrast. This is to detect the injuries and determine its severity, and to detect active extravasation as well. A separate workstation is needed to allow to patients to move without waiting for the CT computers to reconstruct reconstruction, because. Uh, reconstruction could take up to seven minutes for the aorta only, but it is the uh, whole examination is 20 seconds uh, for the neck, abdomen, chest, and pelvis. CT angiograms obtained are usually equal in quality to conventional angiography. The scan time, as we said, is 20 seconds, but reconstruction time is long, reaching up to five to seven minutes to get multiplanar reconstructions for the aorta only. We check the lung window for air from top to bottom for pneumothorax and pneumoperitoneum, lung window. And then we check soft tissue window from bottom to top for any vessel injuries, fluid collections, active extravasation, then we check the bone window and uh, a multiplanar reconstruction in sagittal and the coronal are then requested. This is uh, coronal and sagittal reconstruction for vertebral fracture, compression fracture. And this is hematoma of the around the rib with lung contusion. And here in bone window there is fracture rib. And this is a reconstruction 3D showing the fractures posteriorly. And this is a sternoclavicular dislocation seen as in bone window axial. And this is sternal fracture seen in bone window axial. CT density of the lung parenchyma is minus 400 plus, mi plus minus 25 Hounsfield unit. The diameter of the aorta is 4 cm. It is actually 3.8, but we can assume that it is 4 cm. Root to, aortic, uh, to abdominal aorta diameter is 1.5 to 1, so it is 3 to 2. At the root, it is 3. If it is at the root, it is 3. At the abdomen, it is 1. Uh, it is uh, 2. It's 3 to 2. At the root, to the abdomen, but not ascending and descending. Definitely, the descending is less than the ascending. If the ascending is 5, the descending is 3 plus. But at the root, if the root is 1.5, the abdomen will, would be 1. 3 to 2. Abdominal aorta. Traumatic pseudoaneurysm, this is due to compression and there is definite intimal laceration starting to bulge on the wall and here is seen and here is there and these are called the hidden areas within the arch so the usual sites for traumatic surgery either along the arch from out or from in and in CT you can see that it is difficult to recognize this.
here a case where there is traumatic pseudoaneurysm occur and then stent was inserted a stent was inserted to save this part of the aorta now in this we, we see that there is change of the ratio between the ascending and descending caliber and outline they are not so smooth and they are similar to each other this would raise the possibility of uh, uh, aneurysm this one should be less than that one if the, of this one if this one is 4 this should be 3.1 or less here is an intimal flap denoting traumatic dissection and here is a, an extra luminal hematoma due to penetrating the lung injury with branch injury and here we have periportal lymphedema and hemopericardium that's why there is congestion and periportal lymphedema here seen as lucency around the arborization of the hepatic veins here the superior vena cava is injured with hematoma around and here are different types of lung hematoma you see this one this is the earliest form of lung hematoma you can see it as a star shaped faint opacity like this or if it is more dense you can find it as a consolidation frank consolidation with air bronchogram with air bronchogram here we have pneumobotanium uh, pneumothorax here is pneumothorax is located here is laceration of the lung with fluid inside lung laceration and here is pneumodiastinum and this is surgical emphysema so we have pneumothorax surgical emphysema pneumodiastinum this is active bleeding with lung within the lung parenchyma with massive hemorrhagic pleural effusion and here is active bleeding in an inter intercostal vessel with massive consolidation and hematoma of the lung reaching out remember the word traumatic hernia of the chest that is disruption of the musculature and fascia of the chest or abdominal wall of course this will involve the, the ribs as here the case is chest wall hernia the ribs are destroyed the musculature is no longer seen and the heart is lying just beneath the thin muscle layer here this is called chest wall hernia this is an intercostal tube and this structure another another uh, tube no this is a fracture rib and this is intercostal tube and multiple lung lacerations here one here one there and here and there but most of these resolve uh, quickly this is a herniation through a stab, following a stab wound now we come to the phragmatic rupture the phragmatic rupture can occur with or without herniation of the abdominal contents into the thorax it should be differentiated for differentiated from paralysis, penetration, 
or congenital hernias. We know that congenital hernias we have the mugdali posteriorly and mugdali anteriorly, and we have the normal uh, uh, hernias that occur. The, I mean the normal sites of hernia, usual sites of hernia we know that can occur at the esophagastric junction and we can get a paraesophageal or sliding hernias but sometimes there is rupture of the diaphragm and the rupture of the diaphragm we will follow uh, uh, next slides to see what signs we can search for here there is lost configuration of the left cupola of the diaphragm gas containing structures are seen up and there is associated left pleural reaction you should suggest that the there is left diaphragmatic rupture here is another case with the site of rupture is pointed out and the hiatal occur between the abdomen and the chest with momentum and uh, visceral structures and fat is going out, uh, going uh, upward. Of course, there is marked discrepancy between the level of the diaphragm on the left and that of the right, and the whole level is seen intra within the thorax. Within the thorax, this is a traumatic diaphragmatic hernia. We should be able sometimes we, we might be able sometimes to see this constriction along the spleen and this is called the splenic collar sign or this one is a splenic collar sign denoting that there is a hiatal rupture and a hernia rupture a hernia diaphragmatic rupture and this is the choral sign of the liver where the waist represents the two separate ruptured leaflet of the the muscular parts of the diaphragm. Thank you.